Hollywood, California, the makers of Old Gold Cigarettes present the Comedy Theater. The only radio program that brings you every week the greatest stars in the greatest comedies. Tonight's comedy, the radio version of RKO's picture success, Having Wonderful Crime, starring Pat O'Brien with June Dupre and Tom Conway. And here is the director of the Old Gold Comedy Theater, Mr. Harold Lloyd. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we have chosen that mad comedy mystery of three lovable zanies who are having a wonderful crime. And because our play involves three outstanding people, we are happy to present three of the nicest and most talented people in this town, or any town. Pat O'Brien, June Dupre, and Tom Conway. Now, let's uh, get on with the show. When Chicago's famous criminal attorney, Michael J. Malone, together with Jake and Helene, had solved the Wellington murder case, Malone said... This is the last time those two screwball friends of mine will get me to play detective, and I mean the last time. And when goaded on by Jake and myself, Malone has solved the notorious Ricardo case and again outsmarted the police, he said... No, I should have known better. Allowing myself to be sucked in by those two half-wits again, but this is the last time, and I mean the last time! Then, when Malone learned that Helene had traced the murder in the Huntington case and needed his assistance, he shouted... No, 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 no! <laughs> Hello. Yes, this is Michael J. Malone. Oh, uh, no, Helene. Helene, for the last time, the answer is no! I know you've got the murder! All right, pour him some tea, will you? <laughs> what, what, you, you got him in my office? No, 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 no What, uh, yeah, all right, keep him there, of course I'll pick up Jake, we'll be right over And keep that pistol pointing in the right direction Toward your head Now, I, I warn you One move and I'll pull this trigger You, you murderer The police won't care if I hand you over dead or alive All right, now, lady, think of me your gray-haired murder. <laughs> This is going to break a poor old heart. Well, you you should have thought of that before you shot Huntington. Well, you see, I'm impulsive. <laughs> you, you are? Oh, well, that's too bad. Mm, so is me poor old mother. I was just on my way to see her. And where is she? In the state prison. Got two more years to go. <laughs> you see, I was... Don't move toward that door. Stop, I've got to shoot. Where is he, Elaine? No! Oh. Don't mind me, but you just shot the wrong man. <laughs> Honey, are you all right? Oh, Jake, the murderer, he's behind the door. Look out. Oh, no, you don't, buddy. Well, that ought to hold our tender comrade for a while. Oh, Jake, darling, did he hurt you much? Oh, just broke the skin on my fist. If rapists don't set in, I'll be all right. Are you sure you're all right, honey? Mm, just kiss me. This one's for gallantry under fire. Mm. <laughs> Say, uh, look, uh, I hate to disappoint you, two lovebirds, but I am still breathing. Oh, good heavens, Malone, are you shot? No, no, there are just some large mosquitoes in here. <laughs> uh, look, Malone, you better let me see that shoulder. Oh, that's nothing, that's just a scratch. Yeah, why don't you get her a bigger gun? <laughs> Cops! The cop! I'm sorry I shot you, Malone. Oh, that's all right. Think nothing of it. I'll do the same for you someday, real soon. Well, look, there's Sergeant Monaghan coming this way. Uh-oh, the pinch is on. Let's duck into this theater. I don't want to go in What's there. wrong? Well, I've seen this picture. Get in there before I carry it. Hmm, personal appearance of Great Marvell, world's greatest illusionist. Uh, three tickets, please. Young man, I was in the line ahead of you, and so were all these other people. I'm sorry, lady, but if I miss the opening chorus, I just can't follow the plot. Come on, kids, in who goes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the great Amovel, the most baffling, vanishing act of all time. He will appear locked in this escape-proof cabinet and will reappear on the platform suspended above your head. 
Uh, we would like a volunteer to pull the cord. I always wanted to go on the stage. I'll pull the cord. Oh, be quiet, will you? Sit down or I'll slug you. Uh, slug? <laughs> I'm alone. Slugging a wife is a privilege reserved exclusively for her husband. Sit down, wifey dear, or I'll slug you. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, you should slug you. Yeah. What? What'd you say? Wife! Oh, sure. Didn't she tell you? Uh, we did a little disappearing ourselves today. Mr. Malone, Mrs. Justice. How do you do? How do you do? Congratulations. May I suggest a nice honeymoon trip to South Pole as beautiful this time of the year? <laughs> We're going to Len Hart Lodge. Uh, you volunteered to pull the cord, madam? I certainly did. Well, here you are. Just pull the cord for you. Oh, this is fun. Here goes. Oh, there, there's no one in there. I must pull the wrong cord. Oh, the guy probably didn't like the show and went home. And I should have gone with him. Ladies and gentlemen, something has just happened. The great Mobile and Dewey, his disappearing act, has disappeared completely. No one is to leave the theater. We've sent for the police. Oh, the, the police, police, the police. Here we go again. Let's try the stage exit. I'm sorry, sir. I have orders to allow no one to leave. Oh, I've got to go. I've got a nosebleed. Oh, I see. But uh, how about these people? Never saw them before in my life. I'm his nurse. Uh, I'm his doctor. But I've got orders. <laughs> Get in, honey. We've got a long drive ahead of us. So long, Malone. We're off to Lake Lenhart. So long, kids. Happy honeymoon and good riddance. You deserve each other. And don't forget, Malone, I want to cut of that check. What check? Well, the one you're going to get for defending the murderer in the Huntington case. What are you talking about? What makes you think I'm going to defend that guy? Well, I know you're always looking for new business, so I left your card on his chest. You left me... You... <laughs> no... Jake, did you hear that? What, what can I do? She loves me. So long, Malone. Oh, uh -huh. no, you don't. Huntington case was your idea. If you think I'm going to sit up all night answering questions while the cops grill me, you're Daffy. I'm going with you. But, Malone, don't you understand? We're on our honeymoon. So what? I'm going with you anyway. Come on. Here comes Malone. He's the chaperone. <laughs> Well, it sounds like nice, good, clean fun. But me, I like a quiet evening at home once in a while. Yeah, but try and get it. Why, Harold, you know, just the other night after dinner, I changed my robe and slippers, fixed my reading light, and settled down with a good whodunit. And at that moment... Yes? And there was Cousin John with about six of his noisier relatives, if you know what I mean. Ah, huh, said John, we've seen both movies, so we thought we'd drop in and see you. Well, now, what could a guy do? Did I jump on little John? No. I just say to myself, Bob, old boy, why be irritated? Light an old gold. Yes, there's real enjoyment in old gold, especially today. But you can't enjoy a cigarette that burns harsh, hot, dry. For this reason... Old golds are conditioned with a special moisture-protecting agent we call apple honey. Made from the juice of fresh apples, it actually helps prevent cigarette dryness. Besides that... Old Gold's unique blend of many great tobaccos is enriched with a touch of tasty imported Latakia tobacco for extra flavor. Extra flavor plus special protection against cigarette dryness. That's Old Gold. Try them whenever you can, and remember, next time unexpected callers disturb your quiet evening, why be irritated? Light an Old Gold. <laughs> And now back to Harold Lloyd and tonight's Old Gold Comedy Theater presentation, Having Wonderful Crime, starring Pat O'Brien, June Dupre, and Tom Conway. All right, Mr. Lloyd. Uh, this next act might very well be entitled Honeymoon for Three. On the road to Lenhart Lodge, we find Malone, Jake, and Helene. Malone is unhappy, Jake is in love, and Helene is driving. And with that set up, anything can happen and usually does. Mrs. Justice, would you mind keeping both hands on the wheel? Mr. Malone, the two bucks I spent for the marriage license also includes the privilege of kissing my wife. He's just jealous because no one would ever marry him. Oh, yeah? I do all right in my own quiet way. 
Don't look now, but just ahead of us, the road divides. Oh, now let's see. Was it the left road or the right road? Just avoid the middle, because there's no road there. It's just a big tree. <laughs> How about the left road? No, no, oh, that wouldn't be the right road. How about the right road? No, no, that would be the wrong road. Uh, I guess I'm with the wrong people. <laughs> By the way, darling, there's something I forgot to ask you before we were married. Mm? Oh, that's all right, Jake. She's a big girl now. <laughs> we had more privacy in the Pentagon building. What were you saying, darling? Uh, I forgot to ask you, can you cook? Why, no, I thought you could. Oh. <laughs> no, no, I figured on doing the knitting. Oh. <laughs> anyway, Mama loves Papa. And Papa's burning up with love for Mama. <laughs> I, uh, I guess you two know about the birds and the bees. <laughs> We hit something? <laughs> Helene, honey, you said it was the left road. Well, I was looking through the mirror. Oh, that's just what I love about you. No, oh, let me out of here. I'm walking the rest of the way into the nearest bar. Mr. Bartender. Uh, yes, miss. May I have a glass of sherry? Oh, certainly. Say, aren't you Phyllis Gray, the diving champion? That's right. I thought I'd seen you in a lot of dives. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a dandy. Uh, you're here for the aquatic meet at Lenhart Lodge, aren't you? From the looks of the posters all over your bar, I must be. Oh, you know, I love the water. An uncle of mine was a great diver. One time he stayed underwater for three weeks. He hit a rock. Oh! <laughs> oh, my, oh, my, that's a dandy, all right. All right. I hope the bourbon is better than that joke. I was talking to the lady. Oh, how do you do? Well, haven't we met somewhere before? Said he with a great deal of magnanimous charm. Please <laughs> to lay have. It evidently don't remember when we met before. Uh, oh, you don't say. The people of the state of Illinois versus Frank Lombardo. Oh, sure. Sure, now I remember. You were the witness with the dimpled knees. <laughs> you tried to make a perfect liar out of me. Oh, no, wait a minute. No, 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 let me explain. You see, when I'm representing a client at the bar, I'm one person. But when I'm parked at the bar with a beautiful gal, I'm somebody else. I'm really two people. Well, three's a crowd. Maybe I'd better leave. No, no. No, no. Habeas corpus. Why didn't you say so, Mr. Malone? Well, as a matter of fact, I was just getting around to it. In fact, I was going to invite you to come along on their honeymoon. Now, wait a minute, Malone. Oh, don't worry, Jake. I'll take care of everything. Who protects the poor working girl? Who protects the rich working girl? Who protects any working girl? Michael J. Malone. She doesn't even have to be working. <laughs> uh, look, Malone, I'm a married man, so I'm not interested any longer. But, uh... Go on. There's a fee for legal advice, you know. Uh, huh? 
How do you manage to attract all these beautiful women? Hmm? Oh, uh, oh, I just take a big mouse trap and I put in a piece of cheese, and when they come out for the piece of cheese... They get you. Naturally. <laughs> I beg your pardon, but are these two newlyweds? Yes, bartender. Ghastly, aren't they? Well, I don't mind. Say, how about kissing the bride? Well, certainly. That's a wonderful idea. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get married more often. This should call for a drink for the bride and groom. Say, drink for the bride and groom? Wonderful idea. What do they have, Jake? Soda or water? Soda. Bartender? Two Mickeys with soda. <laughs> oh, no, wait a minute. No, no, hold it, bartender. I got a better idea. Folks, the happy groom would like to buy a drink for the house. Champagne for everybody. Malone, what do you say? I said champagne for everybody. Oh, well, it, it was a sweet gesture, Malone. We'll be seeing you. No, no, don't bother. Just, just sign the tab, sonny boy. Oh. Give him the check, bartender. Okay, here you are, sir. Uh, nothing like buying a drink for the boys. Come along, Mrs. Justice. Good night, all. Oh, Mrs. Justice. Mm -hmm. By the way, uh, just a word of advice. When you carry your husband across the threshold, don't trip. He's the collapsible model. <laughs> Oh, he's a fine man, Mr. Malone. Eh, put a nice tip on the bill, too. Oh, he's one of the finest fellas I ever... What? Malone? Mal Malone! Malone! It... That's me! Well, if it is, your name's on the tab for $147 and uh, $63 tip. No, 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 no! Mr. Malone, what's the idea of dragging me out to the boathouse at this hour? Well, I have a little fishing to do, Miss Gray. <laughs> Certain fish bite better at night, I hope. Fish of the Malone type? Oh, such lack of faith. All right, into the canoe, step down. Aren't you going to take any oars with you? Oh, what do I want with oars? I use my arms for paddles. I do it the hard way. <laughs> oh, uh, say, I... You know, I forgot to ask. Can you swim long distance? Yes, and if necessary, I have roller skates that work on water. <laughs> well, aren't you going to get in? Hey, Malone! Malone! Uh-oh. Pull the boat alongside the float for a minute. Malone, we need you. What is this? Don't stop to ask questions. Just come along. This is important, Malone. So is this. Well, come along, Malone. Come along. Don't go away, Phyllis. M Mr. Malone, I'm drifting. Throw me an oar. Be back as soon as I can, honey. Come on now, Helene. What gives? Well, we went up to the suite. We found a trunk that didn't belong to either of us. It was unlocked, so we opened it. Where'd you pull out this time? A rabbit? A body. Oh, huh? Anybody I know? I tell you, Malone, we found a dead man in the trunk. Oh, oh, housing shortage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> look, look, if we're going to play games, I got a gal out there. I'd rather play post office. <laughs> but, Malone, it's no game, believe me. You mean it's really on the level, huh? Oh, on a bright. What are we going to do, Malone? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Yes? What, Malone? I'm going to pack up and leave quietly. Uh, but, Malone, you don't understand. The trunk is in your room. The trunk is... The, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> oh, this is fun. <laughs> Oh, well, that's the way it goes. We've got to take the bad breaks with the good breaks. Breaks? Smile when you say that. <laughs> Why? Well, talk about breaks. You know, there I was with a boss and a few friends coming in for dinner, and, and what happened? What? Well, the icebox broke down. So? No ice? No dice. Oh, but, well, did I tear the icebox limb from limb? No. I just took a deep breath and said to myself, Whoa, Bob, why be irritated? Light an old gold. And believe me, smokers, an old gold's worth more than its weight in sheer smoking enjoyment. Here's why. Old Gold's famous blend of many great tobaccos 
including a touch of rare imported Latakia tobacco for extra flavor, especially conditioned with apple honey to help prevent cigarette dryness. So, friends, for a better, keener-tasting smoke, light on old gold. Easier said than done, perhaps, since quantity is limited, and limited for these understandable reasons. First, old gold quality is held to full 24-carat standard. Second, our armed forces get first call on all cigarettes we make. Yet we're doing our best to assure your share of remaining old golds. So if you must take a substitute brand today, remember, your dealer may have old golds tomorrow. Act three of Having Wonderful Crime, starring Pat O'Brien, June Dupre, and Tom Conway. All right, Mr. Lloyd. Yes, trouble seems to go looking for Michael J. Malone. Trouble sometimes spelled out Jake and Helene. And other times, just plain trouble, such as finding a trunk in his room at Lenhart Lodge with a dead body in it. And then later finding that same trunk and same body missing. But Malone, I tell you, there was a trunk in the room with a dead man in it. Bodies, dead ones in particular, just don't walk out of hotel rooms. Well, if there's no trunk and no body, we've nothing to worry about. Because where there's no body, there's no crime. <laughs> Isn't that right, Counselor? Now, look, if that trunk's going to show up somewhere, and if there's a body in it, you can bet your last buck they'll trace a little surprise package to us. It never fails. In that case, we'd better find it before someone else does. Hello, desk. Uh, this is Mr. Justice. Do you know anything about a trunk being taken out of 205? No? Okay, thanks. Oh, 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 wait a minute. What's this lying on the floor? Oh, it's the kind of paper they put on shelves. It is, huh? It just happens to be a theatrical poster, that's all. Why, that's the picture of the great Movell. The guy who disappeared. But what was he doing here at Lenhart Lake? You can read, can't you? It says right here on the poster, the great Movell, master illusionist, Lenhart Auditorium, June 1st. Then he played here before we saw his act in Chicago. Throw that rope over the poster, Movell. Go on, hurry up. Okay. There, that's all covered. Come in. I'm Mr. Winslow, manager of the hotel here. The clerk told me about your trunk. I'm frightfully upset. That makes it unanimous. I don't understand how anyone could have taken it out without our seeing it. And the gentleman I'd wanted to ask about it, the one in 203, checked out of the lodge early this evening. What gentleman? A uh, Mr. Fred King. Do you recognize him by a picture? Why, yes, I think so. Elaine, take the robe off that poster. Alagazam, abracadabra. There you are. Oh, that's him, that's him, that's Fred King. Now that, my friend, is the great Movell. Why, the porter said he saw him prowling around the room while you folks were downstairs. He did, huh? Well, it was his last prowl. He's been murdered. Murdered? Not here in my hotel. He was here inside that trunk. Well, we'd better call the police right away. Uh, uh, police? Oh, here we go again. Of course, we'll all be available in case they want to ask questions. Just a minute, Mr. Winslow. Just a minute. I wouldn't be in a hurry to call the police. You see, there's your hotel to think of, and things like this can ruin you. Besides, we've done a bit of dabbling in these things ourselves. Now, you take the Huntington case. Ouch! Oh, did I step on your foot, sir, darling? You certainly did. Anyway, don't worry your pretty little head, Mr. Winslow. We'll have the trunk and everything in it. Including Mrs. Justice, I hope. Before you can say Michael J. Malone. Well, uh, shall we say 24 hours? Shall we say a day? In less than that. Good night. Uh, good night. My dear girl, may I be the first to present you with a combination detective diploma junior G-man badge. Good night. Oh, Malone, where are you going? Mr. Justice, just let us say I'm allergic to you. Now, look, Malone, we're all in the same boat. The boat, boat, the boat. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, pardon me, I've got to see a dame about a canoe. <laughs> Winslow, what goes on? Well, earlier this evening, Mrs. Justice mentioned the Huntington case. No, no, no. She said, uh, my hunting case. Mm. And so I did a little sleuthing on my own. Oh, you found the body? No. I learned the police are looking for you in the Huntington murder case. Well, Mr. Winslow, I also did a little sleuthing. I learned that Fred King, alias the great Movell, who supposedly checked out of the lodge, never checked in. Now, how do you explain that? I think we understand each other, Mr. Malone. I'm sure we do, Mr. Winslow. Oh, I've got a deal for you. Mm-hmm. If it pays off in real money, I'm interested. It pays off to the tune of $12,500. Well, that's a mighty pretty tune. Yeah. <laughs> it's a deal. 
Look, I'm no cop. What's the story? Now, uh, you probably already know that Linhart Lodge and all the property here is owned by the two old maid Linhart sisters. Elizabeth, the older sister, invited Movell here for one night and gave him a check for $50,000 for his performance. 50000 bucks when I had to be a lawyer. Well, uh, Myra, the other sister, asked me to get the check back. I offered uh, and offered me 25000 if I could. Now, you see, I handle a great deal of their business. Well, and yeah. brother, how you handle it? I approached Mobel, said the old gal was simple-minded, offered to make a settlement, but he wouldn't bargain with me, so... Uh, so you knocked him off? Yes, yeah, backstage at the theater. And you stuffed him into his trunk, huh? Yes, yeah. and I had the trunk shipped up here to Linhart Lodge. I planned to drop it off in the lake, but you beat me to it. Unintentionally, Mr. Winslow. Believe me, unintentionally. You see, when I registered without luggage, the porter figured the M on Movell's trunk must have stood for Malone, so he sent it up to my room. You mean you didn't tell the porter that it was your trunk? No, no. I didn't have the vaguest idea there was a trunk or what was in it until it was brought up to my room. I thought you were in on it from the beginning, Malone. Well, I always prefer being in on deals at the end. Payoff still goes, isn't it, Mr. Winslow? 12500 bucks? Oh, sure, sure. I'll give you the dough. It's here in my inside pocket. I'll get it myself, uh, Winslow. Hey, stop, stop, and stop, pardon me while I relieve you of that automatic in your inside pocket. Hey, there, thanks. No, don't shoot. Don't shoot, Malone. Don't. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> what are you doing up there? We had a grandstand seat in this canoe rack. We heard Winslow was looking for you, so uh, we slipped in without paying admission. What's the canoe slipping off the rack, Jay? Oh, look out for your head, Malone. Good morning, Mr. Malone. I'm the new nurse. How's the head? Well, I wouldn't know, beautiful, until you held my hand. <laughs> Pulse is normal. Never mind my pulse, honey. How about my heart? Did you see the morning paper? How about my heart? It says, prominent criminal attorney solves murder mystery. No kidding. My heart says that? No, the paper. How do you like that? I'm a celebrity. Isn't it thrilling? You know, three weeks ago, we had a tailor who pressed Frank Sinatra's pants. (laughs) Say, that's wonderful. No, he was in them. (laughs) I'll see who that is. There's a young lady outside to see you. Young lady? Send her in. She's with a gentleman. Give him out. It's a Mr. and Mrs. Justice. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Justice. No, 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 no. No. No, I'm, I'm going right through that window. Oh, no, it isn't open. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Well, so closes the story of having wonderful crime. Right now, Pat O'Brien, June Dupre, and Tom Conway are thanks to you for a most enjoyable half hour. Thank you, Harold. I enjoyed every bit. It was a pleasure. Certainly was. Who's on the old gold roster next? Well, we're very happy to welcome next week June Allison with Reginald Gardner, Don DeFore, and Bill Williams in the RKO production, Tom, Dick, and Harry. Believe me, I'll be listening. So will I. Me too. Uh, Good night, folks, until next Sunday. See you then. Having a Wonderful Crime was presented through the courtesy of RKO, producers of Enchanted Cottage. Pat O'Brien's next picture is RKO's The Amorous Ghost. Tom Conway will soon be seen in the RKO production, The Falcon in San Francisco. And now until next Sunday evening, don't let little annoyances get you down. Why be irritated? Light an old gold. Its tobaccos are conditioned with apple honey to help guard against cigarette dryness and to give you more smoking pleasure. This is Bob Williams saying good night for old gold. This is the National Broadcasting Company.